Do you know, there's so much more to Russia than balalaika and kalashnikov, like these delicious fluffy little pies called pirashki. Mm. Tell you something about pirashki before we start. Proper Russian pirashki does not come together in a jiffy. You gotta take your time and give them all the Russian love they deserve. There's a few little secrets to making these as irresistible as the big boss himself. The perfect pirashki has to have lots of filling with a thin, light, fluffy dough encasing the beauty inside. I suppose a lot like myself actually. In Russia, we have an incredible amount of nayopshiki that gives you a spit of filling with a mountain of shitty dough. Not cool, guys. Nikruta ribiat. And this is how we make it properly. Strap in, relax. Today, we're taking the scenic route, starting with dough ingredients. Flour, just plain all-purpose. Milk, cow's milk, mother's milk, and yes, of course, lactose-free is also fine. Sugar, as evil as it is, goes in. Like many evils in life, this one is necessary. Same with salt. Don't worry, unless you watch the news, your blood pressure won't shift much. Yeast, we use dry, but you can use fresh too. Simply double the weight. Egg, straight from the hen's butthole. Butter, no margarine or nasty stuff, please. The process is pretty straightforward. Get your mixer out, say hi to Richard, flour goes in. No need to sieve. Next up, cracking the egg. Add the yeast to body temp milk. Don't know what that feels like? Stick your finger, well, be creative. If you're using mother's milk, you're all set. Bloom the yeast for 10 minutes, then add it to the mixing bowl with the flour and egg. Add the sugar in slow-mo, as well as the salt. You want to use a dough hook attachment. Don't try doing this with a paddle, tears will follow. Turn your mixer on medium speed and mix for 10 minutes, until you have a smoothie. Add room temp butter piece by piece and make sure it all gets incorporated. Those of you with deep pockets will have an easier time than me and the gang with our $50 fiction aids. Which is why there's a link in the description. Go buy a fancy shiny new toy so we can upgrade over here too. After 5 minutes your dough is mixed. Oil up your hands with a bit of neutral oil. Dump it on a clean work surface. You can use a plastic dough scraper to get every bit out of the bowl, unlike me. Next, you want to slappy fold it a few times. Do this by slapping the ass of the dough onto the table and folding it over itself, like so. Pretty simple, pretty effective. Shape it into a tight ball that resembles a fluffy cushion. Get baby Moses into an oiled bowl. Cover with a damp, stained tea towel and let it double in size at room temp before moving to the fridge. Meanwhile, you make the filling. We start with the meat filling. Vegetarians can skip ahead. Here we got some beef chuck, raised on mother's milk, techno and pushkin's poems. Here's its heart, just kidding, it's turkey heart, delicious on the braai and make you shuffle good when eaten raw. Turkey liver. This is what zero booze and two liters of water a day looks like. Good old onion. And good old garlic. Cut the meat into small manageable chunks. We need to mince it in case you wondered. Once cut, get it back into the container and keep it cold. Cut the hearts into the same size chunks and add that to the meat. Same goes for the liver. Mix it all and chill it in the freezer for 10 minutes. Grab your favorite mincer and the coarse grinding plate. Mince the mix only once. While mincing, make sure to keep the mix even. Bit of this, bit of that. Keep it chilled and give it one more good mix once minced. Clean and chop the onion into small rough dice. Any way you want. Try not to cry. <coughs> Smash the garlic. Peel it. Slice it. Dice it. Salt and mince it. Like so. Ending up with a rough paste. Hot pan and neutral oil. Mince goes in. You want to brown this well to get max flavor. Don't add the salt yet. Keep frying on high, moving the meat often. Once beautifully browned, get it into a bowl. Don't clean the pan. You will pick up all that flavor by adding the onions and only now the salt. Ask me why in the comments. Cook the onions, picking up the fond from frying the meat. Close it with a lid and let it stew for a few minutes until the onions get translucent and soft. Add the fried meat back into the pan with the onions. Mixy mixy, then add either beef or chicken stock. Here I have a special fermented sauce made from beef trim and liver. Simmer it gently for about 10 minutes or until most of the stock has evaporated and the mince is soft. Season with black pepper and more salt if needed. Taste it and evaluate. 
the EBs. Put that into a bowl, cover and move it into the fridge to chill. Hello baby Moses, welcome to Russia. By now your dough will be chilled and doubled in size. Don't try this with warm dough, tears and online abuse will follow. Gently but firmly work your dough back into a round bowl. Divide the dough into 30 gram portions. Be precise, use a scale. Cover with a damp stained tea towel, then 2x2 two two or 1x1, one one, roughly roll the dough pieces into non-perfect bowls. Cover again to keep it all cozy. Shape these pieces of dough into taut little dough balls like this. Create surface tension all around the outside, then pinch the bottoms. I hope they don't ban me for saying that. Give it one more roll to make sure it's perfectly round and the gluten is stretched like spandex. Onto an oiled parchment lined tray it goes. Damp stained cloth. Then continue doing that with all your dough. Cover again to rest the balls for 10 minutes. Your mince is cold now and ready to shape. We do little triangles or whatever shape you want. Umbrellas seems to be fun. Place into the freezer to chill and keep its shape. Now's a good time for... No, not that Vlad. I need milk. For egg wash. Couple eggs goes into a bowl, then followed by the milk. Give it all a sensual mixing until well combined. Important to get it homogenous. If it ain't frothy, you got caught lagging. Funnel that into a clean spray bottle, not the one you used for bleach yesterday. Oil a clean work surface gently. Pop a little bun smooth side down onto the table. Roll it out until you have a flat roundish circle. Place your meat triangles into the center and close the dough around it. Do this by stretching the outer sides so you don't end up with a load of dough in the center. Takes practice, but I believe in you. Pinch the bottoms close, making sure the amount of dough is as equally spread as possible. Continue and pop your beauties onto a parchment lined baking tray. Cover with another tray turned upside down and let it proof in a warm place for a few hours or until puffy and risen like so. Spray the egg wash on generously so the pirashkis are covered good. The time for baking has arrived. Bake at 170 degrees Celsius or 338 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 minutes or until golden brown. And looking like this. Fuck me, look at that. Pushkin already writing a new poem. Cool them down on a wire rack slightly, admire them before you eat them. But before we get to that, let's make another two fillings. All in good time. Another classic. Cabbage is to Russia what Greta is to saving the planet. Popular, not essential. Yet, you can't imagine the one without the other. Garlic, dill, onion, egg and let's crack on. Boil them in boiling water for exactly 10 minutes. Enough time to repeat the garlic process. The onion process also stays the same. Remove the toughest bottom stalks from the dill, then chop the rest finely and place in a bowl. Remove the base of the cabbage. Cut in half, then remove the outer crappy layers until you have a clean cabbage. Cut it into evenly sized wedges before removing the tough core by cutting it like so. Slice it thinly across into short strips. Place it into a bowl before salting and squeezing the cabbage until it starts to soften and release water. This will help it to cook properly later. Remove the eggs from the boil and cool it down in cold water before peeling them. Heat the pan with neutral oil and add the chopped onions. Cook on medium heat and add a pinch of salt and also the garlic. Make sure to keep it blonde without caramelizing the onion. The salt should help. Next, add the cabbage and cook that until it softens. Place a lid on every now and then so it stews. Meanwhile, grab a grater. We're gonna grate some egg. Use the coarse side and grate. Nothing special, just grated egg. Set that aside for now. Check on your cabbage. It should smell noticeably cooked and start to caramelize slowly. Turn up the heat a touch and cook without the lid to caramelize a bit more. Taste and make sure you like it. Remove from the heat and place it into a bowl. Add the grated egg followed by the chopped dill and season with pepper and salt if needed. I seasoned it with this egg white umami rich paste. It fermented for a month at 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me know if you want to see some fermentation videos in the comments. Mix until well combined. If it needs more seasoning, add it. Weigh out 50 gram pieces and form it into round bowls. Place onto a parchment lined baking tray. Place into the freezer for 20 minutes so it sets up a bit. It will make getting them into the dough simpler. Speaking of which, weigh out the dough into 30 gram pieces just like before. Process stays the same, but a quick run through. Pre-shape, shape. Make sure it's perfect and tight. Onto a tray to rest covered under a cloth. Egg wash for spray. Roll it out thin, smooth side down. Place the filling in, close it up. Make sure the dough is evenly spread. Close up the bottoms tight, make sure it's nicely shaped. Give it love, get it back onto the line tray, spaced out enough so it has room to proof. Cover with another tray and proof until puffy in a warm place. Spray with egg wash before baking at 170 degrees Celsius or 338 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 minutes or until golden brown. Keep an eye on them and turn the tray if needed. 
Cool them on a wire rack. Careful, they're hot. Let them cool down slightly. But, of course, the last filling before the great reveal. Apple. Pink ladies or Granny Smith. Star anise. That's spelled anise. Cinnamon. We grate it fresh for best results. Cloves. A spice that gets bad rep because folks don't know how to use it properly. Brown sugar. The darker you go, the better the taste. Butter. Essential to this recipe. Peel the apples, then cut them into quarters. Remove the core and seeds before dicing into roughly equal sized cubes. Get a pan on medium heat, then melt the butter until it gets foamy. Add the apples in slow-mo, followed by the sugar. Start to cook it and add the spices. Grate in the cinnamon. The apples will start to release its juices, resulting in a runny caramel. We want to keep the texture of the apple slightly, so we strain the caramel through a sieve and reduce the caramel separately. This is an unconventional step, but one that'll make you a big daddy behind the stove. This is Cooking Control 101 at its finest. Keeping the apples perfect and making a perfect apple caramel, which we then combine again in a minute. Remove the whole spices from the apples with a spoon or some tweezers. Get the caramel back into the apples. Would you look at that? Do not heat the mixture anymore. This all happens off the heat. A final little trick to lift the flavor and balance the taste. Zest the lemon and then add a touch of the juice. Mix well to combine. Have a taste and feel your brain and mouth connect. Place it into a bowl. Cover it with plastic wrap and cool it down in the fridge for at least an hour. Repeat the dough process like before. If you skip all the way to this point, then go watch the process. For no particular reason, I opted for a long shape. So roll out the dough into a flat oblong. Place the chilled apple mix into the center. Use 40 grams instead of 50 grams. Stretch the dough and pinch close at the seam. This shape is quite tricky, so just do a round shape if you want. Place onto a parchment lined tray and close with another tray turned upside down. Proof until fluffy as room temp. Same rules apply. Spray with egg wash. Then cook at 170 degrees Celsius or 338 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 minutes or until golden brown. When done, you cool it down on a wire rack slightly before you dig into it. You should now have three types of pirashki, ready to go into your mouth hole. And we can finally accept that offer from Old Vlad. Be generous, you all deserve it. Now you understand life and why the fuck you're conscious. To make pirashkis, of course, share it with your mates and be happy. Even if these are better than your babushkas, don't tell her that. Please, I want to live and so should you. Now go make this, Boris. Now you have one more positive about a marvelous place with generous, beautiful people. Well, mostly anyway. Want to see more Russian cooking? Let me know down in the comments. Subscribe and turn on the ding dong so you don't miss a second of the action. And again, from Russia with love. Dosvidania. And this is how to make it properly.